so here we are discussing now the concept of destiny mm -hmm. what happened here okay so it's talking about how the bhagavad gita's message can be applied till now and we discussed this verse has four propositions within it so those four propositions are here karmanne va adhikaraste adhikar is right so the idea of rights is not just a modern conception but the context in which the idea of right is talked about is different so the bhagavad gita is saying over here you have a right to do your work now ma faleshu kadachana but don't think that you are entitled to the results don't be attached to the results that is the second proposition a third is that ma karma phala hetur bhur karma phala is the fruit of the work hetu is the cause so don't think that you are the cause of the results of your work so phala literally refers to the word fruit phala but i have used the word results and that is for a particular purpose which will come to toward the later of the later part of the class and then last is mate sangostha akarmani akarmani is not doing the work so don't be attached to not doing your work so what this essentially means is do your work but don't don't think you are entitled to the results don't think that you are the cause who is producing the results but at the same time don't uh, think that you don't you shouldn't work so the first and the second points are similar you have a so first point is you have a right to doing your work the second thing the fourth point is don't shirk from the responsibility of doing your work Now specifically in the context of the bhagavad gita what this means is arjuna was reluctant to fight the war thinking that what if uh, all the elders in the family are killed and uh, i don't want to cause this uh, terrible bloodshed so krishna is telling arjuna that you as a warrior uh, you have to that's your duty you have a right to do your work but don't be don't don't uh, you don't you are not you are not entitled to determine the results and don't think that you are causing the results you alone are causing the results this will be that there are bigger factors involved in why this war is occurring and at the same time don't think that you you can get away from fighting the war so don't be attached to not doing your work either now here we need to introduce the concept of destiny to reconcile these two points how can we be responsible at doing our, about doing our duty but be detached about getting results let me this is a paradox because for each one of us we all need to do our work but at the same time we often feel that uh, we all we do the work to get the result and uh, our motivation our inspiration our focus all depend on uh, usually depend on the result many self help teachers will tell us that begin with the end in mind envision the result so the idea is that okay think about it and inspire yourself that one day you will get it and that's how you should work that's what makes us responsible so how how can we be responsible without become while i'll still staying detached so this seems to be contradictory but to understand this we need to take into consideration the concept of destiny now how do things go about producing the results there are four factors in that there is we could put it as four d's duty plus destiny plus duration gives the desired result or if you want to use the sanskrit term then karma plus daiva plus kala leads to phala that when we have duty that is we do our part and then destiny is what is not in our control and then duration is specific time for example if somebody is a farmer they sow seeds and plow the land that's their duty then rains come in the right time in the right quantity that's destiny and then the harvesting season comes that's a duration that will produce a desired result or say a couple get married and decide to have a child they unite that's their duty 
then it's not every time that union is there conception happens that depends on destiny and even if conception happens it's not that the baby comes next day there's gestation that's duration so duty plus destiny plus duration leads to desired result and the concept of destiny is itself a huge concept and i won't go into the specifics of that too much today uh, but to broadly understand it to make sense of this particular verse and the mode of working that it recommends so wh uh, what here is destiny now if if you consider uh, this particular analysis destiny essentially means that for anything that we are doing there is there are many factors beyond our control which also shape the results so the factors beyond our control which shape the results can broadly be called as destiny now this could be a general understanding of the word destiny if you want to make a more philosophical or more specific understanding destiny is the sum total of the reactions of our past actions that have accumulated and will unfold in our present and future it's a sum total so here we bring in the concept of karma which also we will discuss further in detail but simply karma is the concept of action leading to reaction cause producing an effect and based on the fact that we have discussed the concept of reincarnation earlier karma also includes the understanding that the context of the action reaction chain is much bigger than what we would normally think that means it's not just what i do right now to you will produce a reaction right away rather what i do now it may produce a reaction after a few months after a few years after a few decades maybe after a few lifetimes so we all come into this life with a certain baggage that baggage is our karma and the way that karma is that particular whole baggage is going to unfold in our particular life that is destiny so we think that i'll work and produce the result but it is not just that simple we may produce we may do our work but sometimes the results just don't come so karma is there but if daiva is not there the karma will not translate into phala now daiva is not arbitrary it's not that destiny uh, just arbitrarily favors some people and uh, disfavor some people no destiny is just the sum total of the actions that that person has done and the reactions that they are going to get as, as a result so now if we understand the concept of destiny then we understand make sense of krishna telling that don't think that you are the cause of the result so karma alone doesn't lead to phala ma karma phala heitur bhur not think that you are your karma is leading to the phala and the karma is the hetu for the phala karma daiva kala is to phala so daiva is a important factor and to the extent we understand the role of daiva to that extent we can make sense of what krishna is saying in this verse that our karma is important if a farmer doesn't sow the seeds there is not going to be no harvest so krishna is saying mate sangostva karma do not think do not be attached to not doing your work why because if you don't do your work if you don't do your part the even if the daiva is there the phala will not come but even if you do your work even if the karma is favorable still if daiva is not favorable the results won't come and therefore do not think that you are the cause of the fruits and do not be attached to the fruits so now to understand what all so this is broadly what is destiny now the, the second question we will discuss is is everything destined no a lot is destined but not everything so destiny determines our situations we determine our decisions so for, if we are driving then destiny could be like a weather forecast okay it's going to be stormy it's going to be snowy when we understand it oh i have to drive carefully at this time the possibility of a danger is much more our destiny determines not just our destiny uh, our 
say weather conditions, the kind of conditions that we're going to face in our life. But uh, so that means say somebody is born in a very in a country which is which is relatively poor, or somebody is born in a particular country which is prosperous, but then suddenly uh, they go through an economic recession where where things become where everybody has to live in austerity. So the weather in a particular place might normally be pleasant, but suddenly there might be severe storms which make life much difficult. So this is all possible. So destiny determines uh, our situations. However, things are a little more subtle. It doesn't just, destiny doesn't just determine our external or outer situations. Destiny also determines our body. So it's when we are driving, it's not just the weather conditions, but also the kind of car. <clears throat> we usually identify very strongly with our body. Uh, but we didn't choose our body. We were born in a particular race, a particular complexion, a, a particular uh, particular kind of physique all this we didn't choose it so it's like we are we start our life journey being given a particular car okay now just drive this car and over time we we get attached to the car however it is we may sometimes not feel comfortable when we look at other cars that are much more attractive but we but we didn't choose our body basically so our body is also determined by destiny. So our car and our driving conditions are determined by our destiny. But how we drive is not determined by destiny. So what, what we have may be determined by destiny. But what we do with what we have is determined by us. That is where our free will comes in. So it's not that everything is destined. And... <clears throat> It is our responsibility to choose wisely. Just like if a person drives according to traffic rules, then the likelihood of accidents becomes lesser. If they defy traffic rules, now some, some defiance of traffic rules can lead to minor problems. If somebody just speeds, they might get away with it. If, no, if there are no cameras or no cops there. But if somebody drives on the wrong side of the lane, then the consequences can be quite severe. Uh, they won't be able to drive. Everybody will be honking at them. Eventually, somebody might hit them. So like that, when we stop doing our part, uh, now, uh, when we don't uh, do our duty properly, when we do, don't do our karma properly, karma here just genetically means actions. Then depending on how improper our actions are, the results can be either minor or they can be catastrophic. But broadly, we can, it's not that everything is destined. We do have free will and based on that free will, we can change things. Now, now a simple way to understand this would be destiny determines our facial complexion. We determine our facial expression. So some of us may feel that, oh, my complexion or my looks are not good enough. Now somebody might be stunningly attractive in their looks, but if they're always frowning and scowling, they won't look very attractive. Now somebody may not have that attractive looks, but if they have a cheerful expression on their face, that attracts. So there is always a range within which we have our freedom. And when Krishna is saying, Ma karma bhur, so if we consider like a circle, there is something with what is in the circle is in our control, what is outside the circle is outside our control. So essentially, Krishna in this verse is telling, Karma, doing your actions in your control, so focus on that. And what is not in your control, let go of that. So <clears throat> Stephen Covey wrote a book, Seven Habits of Highly Success Effective People. And at one time that book was hugely popular. Even now it is influential. But the first principle that he talks about is be proactive. Now, 
as he talks about a circle of control circle of in control circle of influence and circle of concern what are things which we can influence and what we are concerned about which is, circle of concern is always bigger than circle of influence now when he talked about that principle that we should focus on what we can influence and change and not worry about the things which we can't now that was many people found that as a very empowering simple but empowering principle but in the bhagavad gita krishna has talked about essentially the same principle thousands of years ago the only thing is it is presented in a in a language that may not seem that attractive for us it may not relate with us so words like being proactive circle of influence circle of concern oh they captivate us oh okay this makes sense it's a visual it's contemporary jargon but but the wisdom of the bhagavad gita uh, tells in a with a deeper philosophical basis many empowering life principles many empowering many empowering principles for living more effectively so essentially you now when krishna is saying karmanne vadhikaraste that you have a right to do your work that means he is saying that okay what is it, what is in your control in the equation of karma daiva kala phala karma is what is in your control how you drive your car is in your control what kind of expression you have on your face is in your control so you have a right to do that and do that don't become detached don't become apathetic by looking at everything that is not in our control oh you know even if i am cheerful a uh, people are surly people don't cooperate people are out to get me if we start thinking of how people are and that makes us if because people are sullen and disagreeable and we become sullen and disagreeable then we make things worse so <clears throat> krishna is telling that mate sangostva karmani do not be attached to not doing your work recognize that your work is what you have a right to do and somebody may say okay but if i do my work and a daiva is not there then the phala is not going to come if i do my work but destiny is not favorable and the results are not going to come then what is the use of doing my work now the point is that even if destiny is not favorable right and so the phala doesn't come this karma will contribute to the future daiva if we do good we will get good if not immediately eventually so karma never goes waste in that sense even if it doesn't produce immediate phala it contributes to future daiva so this is the basis for understanding how we need to be detached so now <clears throat> let's look at okay sorry so i won't go too much into the we'll come back to the concept of destiny a little later yeah, let's look at the concept of what the gita says about results ma karma phala hetur bhur so that means when krishna is saying be okay, what is this yeah be detached now he said don't be attached to the results so what he means by that is that don't think that you alone are producing the results so don't be attached to them but there is a difference between results and goals results are what we get after the work is done goals are what we set before we start off on doing the work and the bhagavad gita is not again setting goals at all uh, i write on the bhagavad gita every day at a website called gita daily uh, about 300 words uh, practical application of the gita as well as contemporary analysis so recently i got a comment on an article i wrote on 247 one of the readers told me that last 7 years he was he was introduced to the gita about 7 8 years ago and he decided he wanted to mold his life according to the gita and he didn't because he wanted to be detached he didn't set any goals for himself he said that's what being detached means and he says i have stagnated in my career i have stagnated in my personal life and when he read this article he said it's like a illuminating 
illumination like thunderbolts of illumination striking him so uh, we do we all need goals to keep ourselves motivated in life to keep ourselves focused in life so now krishna is not against setting goals every day on the for example in the kurukshetra war before the start of the day there would be planning and krishna and arjuna would plan which of the opponents they were going to confront who they were going to take down on that day a war is a serious business and without strategy people can be slaughtered so they would have some goals most famously on the 14th day on the 13th day jayadrath very deviously schemed and had abhimanyu isolated from his allies and then abhimanyu who was arjuna's 16 year old son was then brutally killed by six warriors attacking si simultaneously that was a flagrant violation of the war codes where one warrior was supposed to fight with another warrior who both of them have weapons and both of them are both of them are well equipped so in general at those time the wars were fought in such a way that it's fought between equal people who were both equally equipped equal warriors equally equipped that means both of them have weapons both of them are on chariots and so a chariot fighter will not fight with a chariot warrior charioteer will not fight with a foot soldier so nowadays we are very uncomfortable with the idea of violence especially in the name of religion and the bhagavad gita when it talks about war it can make us uncomfortable but today the violence that we are uncomfortable now about say especially religious extremism or terrorism terrorism is exactly the opposite of the war codes of kshatriyas terrorists attack people who are not warrior who are not warriors who are civilians who are not equipped and who are not alert so that kind of is that kind of attack is uh, uh, reprehensible so war was more like a test of skills and strength at that time anyway so there was a flagrant violation of kshatriya codes and at that time abhimanyu was killed and because jayadrath was responsible for separating abhimanyu from his allies arjuna decided the next day that i will remove jayadrath from this earth i'll neutralize him before sunset and if i don't then i will enter into fire now when he made this voice a very clear cut goal that arjuna has said krishna didn't tell him at that time hey you have forgotten the bhagavad gita i told you ma kar ma karmanne vadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana no krishna didn't tell that krishna instead supported him and during the whole day arjuna and krishna fought expert arjuna fought expertly krishna guided arjuna expertly and eventually arjuna met his target so setting goals is not only not a problem second not setting goals can be a problem is a problem setting goals is essential goals again the difference to make it more specific if we go here yeah goals are what we set before we do the work results are what we get after we do the work so some people equate goals with results are goals equal to results are goals not equal to results it's not the same thing we hope that our goals become results and that's what we work with so when we are doing the karma it's it's not that we don't care about the phala we want the phala but we don't obsess over it the idea is when we have a understanding of the complete picture of how things work we understand that we need to work but we also understand that our work alone doesn't produce the result so in order to be motivated in order to be directed in order to be focused we need to have a goal just like when we are driving say we need to have a direction where where do i want to go now we might have a plan and a estimate okay i have to go there and i'll reach there in one hour so if we don't have any goal i will just go ahead on the road and think wherever i want to go i'll go wherever i feel like going well, okay if you are driving for pleasure that's fine but we may not get anywhere constructive if we don't have a goal so while driving uh, we need to have a goal to get to a particular destination but after we set the goal suppose we meet a heavy traffic situation 
and instead of one hour, it's going to take one and a half hours. And sometimes we may get so agitated, so worked up. But this really, if the traffic is bad, we might look if there is an alternative road available. Uh, but if there's no route available, then we just have to accept it. So set goals. Yeah, I'll get there by this time. But be detached from the results. Okay, if it doesn't work, maybe call and inform that this is what has happened. Now, being caught in traffic can be an excuse which people use for uh, justifying their coming late, and they may even start late. But we are not talking about that over here. The point is that when things are beyond our control, then uh, we need to accept them. So goals are not the same as results because goals are what we set before we do an action and results are what we get after we do the action. So we need to set goals, but we needn't be attached to the results. This brings us to the last point that be detached, but not irresponsible. So if we don't endeavor for the results, we are being irresponsible. <laughs> We need to endeavor for the results. We need, say, a student is preparing for the exam and a student doesn't study at all. The say the parents ask, Why are you not studying? I'm detached. Well, that's not detachment, that's a responsibility. The student needs to study. Now, after the student studies, when they study also, they may say, Okay, I want to get 4.5 CGPA, I want to get A plus grade, whatever. They have that vision that inspires them to study. But after the exam is done, then what next? Okay, then why why bother about it now? If says a student has about five, six exams on successive days, and say the first paper uh, goes well, but not as well as they expected. They start obsessing over it. Oh, why was this so bad? Why was this so bad? Why was this so, so bad? Then they may lose their motivation to st study and revise properly for the remaining papers, and they may end up not doing as well as they could even in those papers so, okay now i give that paper whatever it is it's over now the test is over let me move on to my the next subject so if we have that attitude then we won't be we, we will be more focused we won't be more, so distracted so so basically detachment helps us to do our work better Irresponsibility prevents us from working effectively, but detachment empowers us to work effectively. Okay, I did my part. Now that's over. I'll let the results come as they may. Let me move on and do the next thing. So when we have this attitude, then we can move forward very positively. That we can be we can be uh, as as resourceful as enthusiastic as possible for the things that are in our control for the karma that we are doing and we can be detached from the results now how is all this related with the idea of the soul it is when we understand that we are souls that we understand that there we have a past and that past extends beyond our immediate past that past extends to previous lives and the if we don't understand that we are souls, then we don't understand the concept that we are carrying a baggage from the past. Then destiny can seem arbitrary and unfair to us. Or we may even deny the idea of destiny. But we all have different situations when we come into life. And the principle of soul and its reincarnation explains why we have the situations that we do in broad principle. And then if you understand it, okay, this is the kind of car I have, but still I can drive. So the knowledge of the soul can help us to detach ourselves from our situations and become more focused on doing what we are meant to do, what is in our control. And that way, when we work, we can become more effective, more resilient. So in the, there are many, this is often a common sub question. This is a, this is a question, subject that raises many questions. So I have skipped some slides and I'll stop here. And if there are any questions, we can discuss. If there are no questions, I will explain a couple more concepts. So I'll summarize what I spoke today. I spoke on the, trying to understand the concept of 
<coughs> detachment that Krishna recommends 247 in the Gita we started by discussing why uh, how the knowledge of the soul can be applied in daily living and uh, not just when say somebody uh, some loud one passes away which we discussed earlier but in our daily functioning so Krishna talks about four points in this verse how you have a right to do your work do not be attached to the, you don't have a right to the results don't think you are the cause of the results and don't be attached to not doing your work so the idea of not being entitled to the results how do we make sense of it and uh, still doing the work responsibly so we talked about destiny and essentially we talked about how things produce the results duty destiny duration all three come together to produce a desired result and within that we talked about destiny broadly refers to at a common at an ordinary level it refers to things the un, an unknown the set of things that are not in our control but affect us it's more and more philosophically based on the Bhagavad Gita's understanding it is the sum total of the uh, actions that we have done in the past and the reactions they have created those reactions are stored and they uh, unfold in our present and the future and that's destiny so destiny is like if we are driving it's the weather conditions and the car that we have but we determine how we drive destiny determines our situations we determine our decisions destiny determines our facial complexion we determine our facial expression so we always have free will uh, what is the range of the free will that is determined by destiny so we have the so it's an empowering principle contemporary principle of being proactive that the Bhagavad Gita has spoken uh, thousands of years ago with greater philosophical understanding of why certain things are in our control and why certain things may be not in our control and with this context we can understand how we can be detached uh, there's a difference between goals and results goals are what we said before we start doing the work and go setting goals helps us to be motivated inspired focused directed but because results are not in control obsessing over them disempowers us and distracts us from doing the next thing which we could be doing so our krishna uh, krishna was with arjuna when arjuna set a goal on the 14th day and the pandavas set goals during the war so goal setting is desirable but obsessing over the results is not desirable and by this combination of being to not set goals to not try our best is being irresponsible but after we have tried our best to obsess over what over the rest over what is not in our control that is being that is uh, that is being attached so being detached means do your part and leave the rest to uh, to factors that to destiny and to the divine that is how we can be effective in our daily living thank you so okay now i look at the questions okay this is a big philosophical question of if if we have free will and how does krishna know the future and that's a, a whole subject which we'll go into when we talk about god's position but briefly when krishna says he needs the future god's knowledge of the future is like our knowledge of the past our knowledge of the past is knowledge without intervention knowledge without control we know say i wanted to wake up at this time today but i woke up at this time so that is knowledge without intervention now we can't intervene god doesn't intervene that's the difference but god has given us free will and he knows if we choose this trajectory this will happen if we choose this trajectory this will happen so it's his knowledge of the future is like say google maps knowledge of the territory he knows that okay if we choose this road we'll go here if we choose this road we'll go here if we choose this road we'll go here so krishna gives us free will and doesn't force us so just as google can predict if i'm going to choose this turn this is where we are going to go if i'm going to choose this turn this is where we're going to go now google may give us advice go here and don't go there but beyond that google doesn't control what we do so similarly krishna's knowledge about the future is 
like our knowledge of the past it's with knowledge without intervention so if should we just surrender to krishna and not set any goals isn't it better to uh, why bother krishna there are two different things going on over here first is that surrender to krishna and he knows everything well he knows everything but he wants to know what our consciousness what our desires are how we are going to act from a spiritual perspective from a bhakti perspective our we want krishna wants us to use our individuality to reciprocate with him so so the devotees want to use their best to offer their best to krishna so in the in vrindavan for example when the devotee yashoda mai or radharani cooks for krishna uh, they think what is the best that i can cook today what will please krishna the most and they strive for the best and they set goals okay today i'll make this many items this many items and we'll cook it so our desire is to please krishna with the devotion of our heart and if we can offer him better and better offerings then we can do better and better service for him so in that sense it's important that each one of us learn to serve krishna uh, to the best of our capacity so so it's our individuality if we don't set goals we depend on krishna but will we be de dependence on krishna is not the only aspect of surrender we'll talk this toward the end of the bhagavad gita course surrender has two distinct as aspects there is dependence on krishna and there is diligence for krishna that there is just like draupadi when she surrendered to krishna it was raising her hands in helplessness that's dependence on krishna krishna at the end of the bhagavata tells arjuna surrender to me and arjuna surrenders but arjuna surrender is not by raising his hands in helpless dependence arjuna surrender is by raising his bow in readiness to fight so that is also another form of surrender surrender means that i accept your will that's one aspect of surrender but another aspect of surrender is i will use my will to do your will so that means now it's my will i want to offer krishna wants to know what is it that we want to offer to him and instead of thinking of krishna's will just as one line which we have to strictly adhere to it's more of one direction and we have our individual way to go in that direction so bhakti is not a denial of human individuality it is the spiritualization of our individuality so that diligence for krishna means we set our goals and we try to, to offer the best that we can we try to become the best we can we see shila prabhupad at a pure devotional level set goals he said i want there should be temples all over the world arjuna set goals i want to become the best archer in the world why so that he could serve krishna best so goal setting is important so that we can offer our individual best to krishna now a tabi ke tash the goals is not desirable but goal setting is important so now how do we understand the concept of say, the verse 327 in the gita prakate kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvashah ahankar vimudatma karta aham iti manyate that material nature is the doer of all things prakriti kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvashah the modes do everything ahankar vimudatma karta aham iti manyate the soul being deluded thinks that i am the doer karta aham so yes this we often quote certain verses from the gita to stress certain points and those points are valid but we also need to look at the overall context of the gita so literally this if you look at the point of karta or doer uh, at the end of the bhagavad gita what does krishna tell arjuna in 1863 he says vimrushyata dashi shena yathechti tatha kuru that now you deliberate deeply and then you do as you desire that means that do as you desire it's do it's not just oh be passive krishna is saying arjuna you are the doer you deliberate and you decide what you want to do and you do it and then at the end of the bhagavad gita 
when arjuna is responding 10 verses later in 1873 what does he say is karishe vachanam tava is i will do your will so again it's do it's doership so it's a it's a it's a over simplified idea to say that we are not the doer it's a it's of course a distorted idea to think that we are the sole doers the balance of this comes in 1815 16 17 in the bhagavad gita where krishna talks about the various factors that comprise action and tatraivam sati kartaram atmanam kevalam tu yah pashyatya krita buddhitvan asa pashyati durmati hi so tatraivam sati kartaram atmanam kevalam tu yah so the one who thinks kartaram atmanam kevalam that i alone am the doer uh, that person nasa pashyati durmati hi that person is not seeing clearly their vision is distorted why is the vision distorted because they are seeing only a part of the reality so there are multiple factors which contribute to the results and out to think that our actions solely determine the results is illusion but to think that our actions don't determine the results at all that is also an illusion so we are the doers but we are not the sole doers and specifically 327 prakriti kriyamanani what does it mean what it means is krishna is telling arjuna in the context of the gita that you are a kshatriya so your body mind are designed to be like a function like a kshatriya a kshatriya is basically a leader a manager a warrior and if you try to become a renouncer if you become a mendicant you can't live for long like that that is not your nature so krishna is telling your body is going to function in a particular way if you think i am going to become a brahman i am going to become a teacher a mendicant a sage well that conception is an illusion your body is going to function in a particular way all that you can do is in which direction that body is functioning goes that means as a kshatriya you can be a virtuous kshatriya or you can be a vicious kshatriya you can according to your body you we can't change our car a car is what we have we can't get a car to move through narrow space like a two wheeler we can't get a car to fly like a uh, fly like a plane so it is once you press the buttons the car is going to move if you think i am i am driving well if the car stops working you can't go anywhere so you can't so it is it is krishna singh arjuna you have a particular kind of vehicle and you are going to uh, uh, you can't change the nature of the vehicle but what you can do is you can determine the direction where the vehicle goes so you can live virtuously you can live dharmically and elevate your consciousness or you can live uh, short sightedly and you can you can live impulsively you can if you try don't follow the principle of dharma if you want to sustain it if you if we try to get a car to go through a narrow space where only a two wheeler can go there will be constant difficulty we'll have to squeeze in squeeze in and eventually we'll just not be able to move forward so if a kshatriya lives like a brahmana they can't do that sometimes it is we only look at the privileges they say brahmanas would live uh, were more respected more honored which is true but at the same time brahmanas had to follow many more rules uh, for maintaining their purity and sanctity so in some ways a brahmana's life was very regulated so it's like moving through a very very small space so you can't live like that so krishna is in that verse telling arjuna don't think that you can you are the doer of your actions in the sense that you think i am a kshatriya and i'll become a brahmana no your body is in a particular way it will impel you to act in a particular way but you act in that way with a, with the purpose of dharma in mind with the direction of dharma in mind so that's the answer over there then now does bhakti does bhakti change our destiny yes in term, krishna can do anything 
okay so your question is are there any other ways to change our destiny apart from bhakti well first we have to understand what exactly do we mean when destiny is fixed uh, essentially it is the quantity of good and bad that we have done in the past and that is going to unfold in our life so that quantity we can't change but does that mean that whole unknown is something which we can't change at all how it unfolds in our life is up to us it's a, it's not entirely determined by the past so this idea of destiny is fixed is it shouldn't be distorted uh, to become lethargic or passive in our lives uh, so for example now when we say the idea of destiny is fixed so if we say the quantity of the suffering in our life is fixed the quantity of our happiness in our life is fixed but is it that simple uh, <clears throat> any bad situation that we are in our life we may say oh it's destiny that this bad situation has come come in my life i can't do anything about it well you can certainly do something about it you can make the bad situation worse no matter how terrible a situation is it never takes away our power to make that situation worse we might be having a very having a terrible relationship with someone can we make it worse yeah just for 15 minutes just rent out everything that is in your heart without any restraint on the tongue the relationship might, might be tottering it will crash apart within within minutes we, it, so we can certainly make things worse and if we can make things worse we can make them better also so by responsibly acting in our present lives we can create a better future for ourselves <clears throat> now regarding say life span being fixed well again things are not that simple uh, the same vedic tradition that talks about destiny also has a whole branch of knowledge called ayurveda and the literal meaning of the word ayurveda is the knowledge that enhances ayu that expands life so if if our life span is fixed then the whole concept of ayurveda whole branch of knowledge of ayurveda would be redundant so is ayurveda a anti vedic branch no it is it is integrally a vedic branch so if life span is fixed then how can life span be increased how can we have a whole branch of knowledge that is going to increase that is going to uh, that is dedicated to in expanding the life span of course ayu is not just the quantity of life it's also the quality of life but quantity is a part of it so things are not that simple uh, just as somebody can commit suicide and shorten their life span or somebody can live in a healthy way and we don't know what our destiny is we don't know what our life span is and we have the responsibility to uh, cho choose those actions that will create the that have the maximum possibility of creating a bright future for ourselves uh, so some people might say okay you are actually by your good choices you are not changing your destiny you are only reordering the destiny yeah that's fine uh, reordering means see by say for example if if some it's it's a stormy weather and somebody drives recklessly and they meet with a terrible accident and this is stormy weather and they drive safely and they don't meet with that accident or they meet with they slip but it's only a minor accident minor accident so now what exactly was destined what was not destined it's very difficult to know that and even if we say that accident is destined and you drove safely so you didn't meet with the accident now maybe 5 years down you will meet the accident okay but sometimes when a problem comes also matters a lot even if you can reorder some things that matters say for example when there is a whole country is shut down a whole county is shut down because of storms and that time we meet with an accident the chance of getting medical relief the chance of uh, being rescued will be lesser but if it's a normal time and that time we meet with an accident 
the chance of uh, being rescued is much higher. In sports, say in cricket, for example, um, we may uh, say every batsman sometimes gets some unfair decisions, wrong decisions. They may be out and they are given not out, and they are not out and they are given out. So now, over the period of a career, these decisions may balance out. But when a player gets a wrong decision, matters a lot. If that player's position in the team is already very shaky, or the the team is on the brink of winning, and this player alone is leading the team to win, and then that player is given a wrong decision, the consequence of this will be much more serious than if the team is in a good situation, the player's position is also stable, and then they're given one wrong decision. It doesn't matter. So even if we say that we can't change destiny and we can only reorder destiny but reordering destiny is is not a small thing if we have three problems and then we get 10 more problems that's much more difficult to deal with or if we have 10 problems and get one more problem it's much more difficult to deal with than if we have one problem and we get one more problem so so by rather than thinking that destiny is fixed and uh, my life is like a rigged match we should think that in every situation, let me try to act the best way that I can. And that way I can, we can create a bet, better future for ourselves. Okay. So are others duties also a part of our destiny? I'm not sure what the question means. Is it that when others do their duty or don't do their duty? Is that a part of their dest our destiny? Yes, we are surrounded by people. Some people are more responsible. Some people are less responsible. So some, some people grow up with very caring parents. Some people grow up with parents who may, may not say it, but they would rather have never had a child. Or they are not really fit to be parents. Now, is that destiny? Yes, it's definitely destiny. It's tragic, but it is destiny. So whether others around us are dutiful or not, if somebody is sick and they go to a doctor and the doctor makes a doctor is negligent or irresponsible and a simple case becomes more complicated is that destiny yes it's destiny so how is daiva not arbitrary well it's not arbitrary in the sense that it's not that unfairly uh, without any connection with our past actions sometimes some bad things are given to somebody and some things, some good things are given to somebody. If somebody is getting bad, it is simply a result of what they have done in the past. So it's uh, it's not arbitrary in the sense that it's not for no reason that good or bad things are happening to people. It is a reaction to the good and bad that they have done. Now, of course, the specifics of why something comes upon, uh, of when something comes upon someone, that may seem arbitrary from our perspective, but there is a higher plan. The ultimate purpose of karma and destiny and this whole order system is not retributive. It is not to simply give us retribution or punishment for our wrongs. It is restorative. It is to raise our consciousness to a higher level. Now, exactly how that restorative effect comes about, that is too complicated for us to understand. Now, can bhakti sadhana make, um, uh, make our life easier when we are going through difficult situations? We will talk elaborately in a future session about what all bhakti does and how bhakti interplays with destiny. But very succinctly, it can work at many different levels. Sometimes the external situation comes upon us, but it is not that severe. Its severity can be significantly reduced. Prabhupada would give the example that when somebody's finger gets cut, a devotee's finger gets cut, maybe their neck was meant to be cut, but only a small reaction comes. So that's what you could say also is divine intervention, that sometimes we are in danger, but the danger comes, but we are saved. Uh, say somebody boards a flight in the fourth flight, somebody's going by a flight and they miss the flight and then that flight crashes. So there are things like that. So destiny can, our practice of bhakti can minimize the hurts that come upon us. But the, another way bhakti can also work is 
bhakti can strengthen us from within strengthen us from within means that we don't collapse so just like when the when the weather condition is very bad somebody starts driving also badly then they make things worse so we uh, when difficulties come we may become resentful we may become disheartened we may become uh, apathetic but if that happens then we can't make things better if krishna our practice of bhakti gives us strength from within yes things are bad but krishna is still good now, even if there is a big storm the stars still shine above the storm in the sky similarly no matter how stormy our life is above that krishna is krishna and his love still exist so by focusing on that we get inner strength and then we can become more resilient and function in our lives properly and that's how we can deal with situations in a more respect in a more uh, proper and effective way so yes both through the externals and through the internals our practice of bhakti sadhana can help us deal with adverse situations one last question hmm, okay there are a lot of questions here so is krishna looking to see how we respond when we get what we want or when we don't get what we want yeah of course krishna is more interested in our consciousness than our particular uh, actions and the results that we do the whole process of spiritual growth is a process of growth of growth in consciousness so if we are grateful when so when we get something that we want and we are thank we thank krishna we don't just forget it and start enjoying then that is positive listen uh, that helps us in our spiritual growth if we are graceful when we don't get what we want and okay krishna this is your will please give me the strength to serve you in this situation also and please help me to move on in my life uh, please guide me what you want me to do i thought i should be doing this but i can't do this without this how can i serve you now so if we have that attitude then krishna will surely help us krishna will see that appreciate that so how we respond to situations definitely uh, contributes to the evolution of our consciousness and krishna is very concerned about that so remaining questions i will answer uh, later in the what's in the whatsapp group and if you don't get an answer please post the questions there and we'll answer in due course thank you very much hare krishna